So a lot of people have asked me what I carry in my backpack and you have to realize that I basically have a winter kit, a uh, three season kit, and then a day hike kit. So I'm going to do a separate video on each one uh, because although each of them uses similar uh, gear, they, they all kind of have their own little merits and advantages uh, versus the other one. So to start out, um, I bought an Osprey Exos 58 pack um, that was a suitable size to hold the extra gear that I take in the winter time. Um, and I added a 2 liter water bladder to that. Um, one of the things that I want to mention though is I seldom carry 2 liters of water in that bladder. I generally only carry one liter of water for drinking and I'll get into that a little bit more when I also show you that I carry two uh, 24 ounce water bottles and why that I do that. So just keep in mind the Exos 58 does have a two liter water bladder in it but I only carry one liter of drinking water. Uh, the next thing is I carry flip flops and I do that because I sleep in a hammock and at night time uh, when you need to get up to go to the restroom or something like that it's just so much easier to slide your feet into some flip flops um, and go do your thing and then come back versus having to put on shoes or boots and get them laced up etc. This blue pad is multi-purpose. Um, I use it to sit on the ground and then I put the flip flops on top of them that keeps uh, water off the flip flops and that sort of thing. Um, I can also use it in the case that I get a cold spot in the hammock, um, which doesn't happen too often. You know, in my gear I've used down into the teens with no issues. Um, but if I do get a cold spot, I can grab that pad, stick it under the cold spot, and in a minute or so it's gone. So that works a lot. Um, this is my suspension straps for my Eno hammock. Um, the Eno hammock that I use is the Pro Nest. It is uh, it was the lightest hammock that you could get, but now they've come out with one that's even lighter. This is I think around nine ounces, and I think they come out with one now that's six ounces. I use the Eno Pro Tarp. Um, I carry four titanium tent stakes with me that can help with the tarp um, if I don't have points to tie off to uh, where I'm doing my hang at. Sometimes in the winter time you can get them in the ground if the ground's not too frozen, um, at least in the area where I live, so they always come in handy. I only use a 50 degree sleeping bag. It's a synthetic bag, so if it gets wet, it is uh, still insulating and the reason I can get by with a 50 degree sleeping bag um, is because of the next thing I'm going to show you, the next two things actually. Um, so a 50 degree sleeping bag, um, it's, it's light, it's less than two pounds, um, it's a mummy style bag. I usually use it as a quilt but if I get really cold I can zip it up as a sleeping bag. If it gets down into say the 30s I use inside the sleeping bag an SOL escape bivy. Um, this can quickly bring uh, that 50 degree bag down into the 20 or 30 degree range. Uh, I've used it a couple times but not too often. It does a great job. Um, it, it's really uh, well worth the money if you're going to be doing winter hiking. I also have a homemade underquilt. There's a video on my YouTube channel. The only time that I use this is if the temperature, nighttime temperatures are going to be down below 50. Uh, in the summertime this underquilt, uh, which also weighs right around 2 pounds, um, is just way too warm. So if it gets down below 50 I use the underquilt. If it's above 50 I don't use an underquilt. The next thing, uh, what you could consider uh, hygiene essentials, toothbrush, toothpaste, hand lotion, hand sanitizer. 
Then in a separate bag, because this is stuff that I'm going to use more often than those, is wet wipes and toilet paper. My first aid kit is just one that I picked up. I think I got this at like Walmart for $4.97. I did add a couple of things to it that don't come uh, in it normally. And I'll go ahead and show you what those are because I think it's really important uh, to add these things to any first aid kit. It's things that you don't realize you need until it's too late. And basically, that comes down to a spare lighter, some Advil, Imodium AD. Trust me, you want to have these on a hike. There is nothing worse than walking or hiking up mountains or on trails or in snow and have diarrhea. Um, not only will it dehydrate your body, but it's just horrible. So always a modium AD. Uh, Blistex lip balm. And I believe that's probably another chapstick. And don't ask why I have both. Um, I've never really ever used either or. But outside of that, it's just a basic $4.97 first aid kit from Walmart. It's super light. It does a great job. Um, lighting. I prefer the headband type lighting. Um, I bought this at Walmart recently. I used to have a Petzl that was um, about the same weight as this Energizer one. I replaced the Petzl with the Energizer for the simple fact that the Energizer has the red LED lights for nighttime vision. Um, does a really great job. The Petzl was an older model Petzl that didn't have the red LED lighting and this is about a third or a quarter of the cost of the Petzl. I think I gave $13 for this and the Petzl was around $49 or $50 somewhere around there. And then when I'm winter hiking I always take uh, my Mora knife. This is the Bushcraft Black. Um, I take it for the simple fact that if something were to come up uh, for instance, I got an injury or something, um, and I would need to process some firewood um, that I could actually do it. That is the only knife that I carry with me uh, in the wintertime, and I don't carry a knife at all in the summertime. Okay, let me move some of the stuff out of the way. Uh, food. I keep all of my food except for my snacks in one of these red waterproof bags and basically my food system you get them out of the bag here uh, maybe lay them over here where it's a little bit easier to see Alright, so food for one day. Let me kind of explain this. I'm actually missing one thing I just noticed already. Um, so for breakfast, I take a Ziploc bag. I add two bags of oatmeal and some powdered milk to it. And then basically I heat my water up, pour it into the Ziploc bag. I have a little cozy that I can put it in to keep it warm that I homemade. Um, so breakfast consists of oatmeal. And powdered milk. Uh, I don't have it shown here because this is actually uh, meals that I brought home from the last hike but this is basically one day so um, then after breakfast so I have a hot breakfast usually with Taster's Choice coffee and some stevia in the raw and then throughout the day I have a bag that's my snack bag and I almost always take kind of the same stuff So throughout the day as I get hungry, I've got uh, Jack's Lynx turkey and cheese, Slim Jims, single serve of 
Planners Nutrition Men's Health. A single serve of Planners uh, Chocolate Nut Energy Mix. Jalapeno Cheddar Crackers. Peanut Butter Crackers. And one Pure Protein Protein Bar. Um, I prefer the Pure Protein Bars simply because they are dense in protein. That's got 20 grams of protein in it. Uh, those nuts have 10 grams. Those have 8 grams. And as far as the uh, turkey links or the Slim Jim, I'm not really sure the nutritional value of those. Um, one other thing that I do keep, and I keep it in the top of my backpack, is a bag of corn chips. Corn chips, by weight and volume, are extremely dense in calories. So when you're on the trail and you're starting to feel a little sluggish, you know, if you eat 5 or 10 corn chips, uh, you're... Uh, your energy level will pick up very quickly and it doesn't take a lot so generally this is the size of bags that I would take for like three days on the trail and yeah they get crunched up but you know what you can take it and sprinkle it in your food or you know dump it in your hand and eat a handful however you want to do it um, the other thing I also have um, I always take gum with me gum helps uh, believe it or not will help your mouth generate saliva so you don't get like dry mouth or you know that sort of thing when you're hiking you're you know they also come in handy that if you do run low on water um, you can put a fresh piece of gum in your mouth and it is just like uh, the flavor and stuff will help you get past that water craving a uh, great thing to do um, this rope in these two carabiners are what I use to create my uh, bear bag line. Um, I bought the carabiners from Walmart. They're super lightweight, probably less than an ounce or two. This rope is a hundred feet long and it's not paracord. Um, it's some sort of a nylon rope with a core. It's a lot lighter than paracord. It's about half the weight of paracord and it seems to also be, you know, I didn't put 550 pounds on it, but I've put uh, close to 200 pounds on it, um, so it, it can also be multi-use, and the way I know that I put 200 pounds on it was me, plus my backpack is like 195, and I've used it for uh, scrambles that were too steep to call a true scramble, so basically you tie a carabiner on one end of it, toss it up the ridge around a tree, the weight of the carabiner drags the rope back down to you, then you can use it to pull yourself up, you know, a scramble if it's too steep to uh, to walk up normally and then really the last of like food and stuff that I carry with me uh, these non energy tablets um, they are an electrolyte that you can add to your drinking water um, I I don't carry this whole tube I basically carry um, uh, two tablets per day so for a a three-day trip I would do six days um, because the other thing is too when you start to if you do get dehydrated you'll start to get headaches you'll start to get nauseous and you know you might get dehydrated because you're just hiking too hard too fast or or maybe you've run low on water um, these are a godsend for helping you rehydrate quicker um, so when you do get to a water source, you can add this to your water. Uh, basically two tablets for 16 ounces of water. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, the whole tube, which I, I can't remember how many tablets is in it. I'm sure if I looked. Uh, they don't say how many tablets is in a tube. But, uh... I think it says 10. 10 tablets. So this this probably weighs 3 or 4 ounces for 10 tablets. It's not very heavy. You could carry the whole tube and have something to carry them in. 
Um, I generally put them in like a small Ziploc bag like pills and carry them that way. All right. This is going to probably sound crazy to a lot of people, but I found that this works great. So remember I said that I carried a 2 liter water bladder in my pack with 1 liter of drinking water. So the water that's in the bladder is drinking water. It's been filtered. I carry these two 24 ounce bottles. Uh, this one actually still has a little bit of water in it in the side of my pack and I carry them empty until I'm getting close to setting up camp for the night. Wherever my last water source is, I fill those water bottles up and I don't even filter it. I just, wherever my water source is at, I add the water to the bottles. Okay. Any water that's in the bottles cannot be drank without either A, being filtered or B, being boiled. So since my evening dinner is always a cooked meal and my morning breakfast is always a cooked meal, I always have 24 ounces for my evening meal, 24 ounces for my breakfast. And that comes out to basically your meal um, and then plus something to drink, which, you know, I realize I didn't even really cover what I do for dinner. So, my dinner, back to my food, <laughs> I did like snacks, I did breakfast. Dinner, I usually do something like one of these Mountain House Pros or a homemade uh, dehydrated meal that's in a vacuum sealed bag. Um, these single serve size Mountain Houses that they've just come out with recently, I actually like. Um, they're not oversized, so they're, they're the, about the correct proportion for an evening meal. And then for my evening meal, I do either coffee or hot chocolate. I've gotten so here lately, I tend to move toward the hot chocolate than the coffee for evening. Uh, so that's my evening meal. All right, the other things I bring for navigation. I always carry my GPS with me. It's not so much to find out where I'm going, but to find out where I've been when I get home. Um, so I hang that on the outside of my backpack. I usually don't even look at it. Um, I carry a map of some sort. These are some examples. This is the outrageous or out outrage, yeah, however you pronounce it. Uh, maps, I absolutely love these. I've got them for the Red River Gorge. I've also got them for the Chitawi Trace, both the northern and the southern sections. Um, excellent maps. Uh, people that are going to the gorge, you can stop by any of the, uh, um, a lot of the places sell these official maps. They're okay. They show all the main trails, but they don't really show like side trails. They don't show you camp spots, that sort of thing, where the outrageous maps do. And also, um, I when I'm researching places to hike, especially at the gorge, I have these two books, uh, Hiking Kentucky's Red River Gorge and also Hinterlands. The difference is, Hiking Kentucky's Red River Gorge will go over most of the major trails, kind of an overview, and Hinterlands goes over unknown trails, known trails, etc., etc. So both books in conjunction are great. Um, so basically, to kind of like show you, I would use the official map and the two books for research and then for instance when I go on the trail I only take the section map for the area that I'm going to I'm going to show you this if you've seen any of my other videos you probably notice I reference these sometimes in the videos so um, as an example let me get this opened up As an example, the last time I went hiking, I was showing you like this area, which is suspension bridge uh, on the Chautauqua down to the rough trail. Um, this map, I absolutely love them. Uh, I, I recommend everybody to own these because it does show the official trails, the unofficial trails, the camp spots, where the uh, 
areas are that have awesome views which is the V's on here um, etc etc uh, you can get these online I'll put a link in the uh, description if you're going to the gorge or Shatali Trace definitely own those okay trekking poles I own a pair of trekking poles they're an off-brand um, I've hiked hundreds of miles with them I'm going to be replacing them soon with a lighter pair because the ones that I own do actually weigh over two pounds for the pair and I want to reduce that down to around a pound so I plan to buy those soon I also have a selfie stick I carry it because I do video all of my um, all of my hikes to put on YouTube and speaking of video gear that I carry I carry a Sony uh, camera this is the uh, oh wow I remember now uh, will it show up here DSC RX100 Cybershot DSC RX100 this is an excellent camera it's relatively light for its size has a lot of pro features um, ability to shoot and roll in JPEG it has a f1.8 lens um, I believe it's 24 millimeter I can't remember now so uh, then in this bag I have uh, spare batteries for my camcorder and also an external microphone two spare batteries and a microphone I usually use one battery per day I would show you the camcorder but it's actually what I'm using to record this with it is basically a Sony uh, I'm sorry it's a Canon and I can't remember the model of it either right now uh, it's an HD camcorder super lightweight it actually weighs less than this camera um, great camcorder clothing this is actually a frog togs parka I love this thing it probably weighs less than two or three ounces this is a Russell brand get at Walmart <laughs> hard shell jacket I've talked about this many times um, you know other hard shell jackets by manufacturers will cost upwards of a hundred plus dollars I think I gave seventeen dollars for that one I have wore it um, on five or six winter hiking trips I've taken it on a couple of the early spring trips when the nights get cold um, it is an awesome insulator and it's also waterproof clothing that I take in the winter time is also the same clothing I take in this uh, three season kit let me just dump everything out here all right for clothing we have I always get this name wrong so let me look at it first. <laughs> I have a Montbell down uh, vest. Great to keep your core warm. It's super lightweight, packs up small. I think these are about a hundred and something dollars. Uh, well worth the money. These are actually the legs to my zip off pants. They're made by Columbia. Merino wool socks. These are a little bit taller than ankle, but not like a, a full length sock. Um, these are a mid weight. Um, even though they're merino wool, I use them in the summertime because I've never ever gotten blisters wearing this one pair of socks. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's summer winter fall spring I've worn them with hiking boots and trail running shoes I've never gotten blisters wearing these they're a thick sock they're also great for keeping you warm at night I always carry an extra pair in case my feet get wet from sweating or water or snow um, so that way when I go to bed at night I've always got a dry pair This is also a Russell brand. It's kind of like a uh, 
I don't know, it's super lightweight. I've never actually worn it. Um, it's more like a fitness type sweatpant. Uh, but but they are super warm and I know that because I have the matching jacket that I have worn so I always take those again gives me something different to sleep in at night also a little bit better protection than shorts or uh, or pants you can use them as an extra insulation layer this is the matching jacket to that uh, it's an ultra lightweight jacket These are actually uh, silk lined gloves. Um, if you know anything about silk, silk is a better insulator than wool. Um, they're super lightweight because they're silk. Um, I've used these down into the you know, single digits and my hands were completely warm. To go along with that, I also have these are Terramar Thermos Silk. Uh, base layer these are super light um, they're kind of expensive but they are silk um, if I can get them to show up here you can actually see through these see but they are super super warm they are warmer than any wool or cotton long johns I've ever owned so uh, well worth the money I've got both the tops and the bottom and then I have also a beanie uh, this is really lightweight, believe it or not. I believe that it come from uh, Old Navy is where I bought it from. But it's super lightweight. Uh, if your head stays warm, the rest of your body generally stays warm too. And this is all I ever use. So I believe that is pretty much everything that goes in my winter pack. Uh, kind of all laid out here a mess now. Uh, it is the Exos 58, like I said. Uh, total weight with food and water uh, is about 32 pounds in the winter time. That's pack, food, water, and everything you see laid out here. 32 pounds. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to uh, comment in the comments area. And uh, I'll get back to you with whatever, if you have any recommendations, I appreciate those too. Thanks for watching.